Hey, good morning everybody. Jerry here with Tiki 7-1 and this is the day I've been waiting for. I'm getting ready to unload that greenhouse and bring all of that tropical goodness that's been pent up all winter long out into the Tiki garden and really turn it back into a Tiki garden. It looks kind of barren right now. But before I do that, I've got to get my water situation squared away. I've had the water stuff all unhooked for winter time because of freezing. Uh, I've got a filter to put in. I've got uh, a drip irrigation filter timer. I'm going to show you how I've got it set up and then uh, kind of my layout, lay of the land uh, for my drip irrigation. Maybe give you some ideas for your garden. That way you can kind of make it uh, automatic and hands-free and free up a lot of time for you. So let's get to it. So let me give you the 10,000 foot overview of how this thing's going to work here. Right here I've got a line that runs out to the greenhouse. I have heat tape around it and PEX tubing and insulation. That way I have water out to the greenhouse. It comes around and then goes in the ground. On this side, this is where I'm going to be hooking up my uh, water filter. It's going to filter out uh, chlorine, chloramines and all that stuff and uh, give me good water for my plants. I've got another opening right here where I'm going to connect these up at and every season when I close everything off I wrap it in pantyhose on all of the open connections when I blow it down for the winter time and get it all closed out. The filter will hook on, the PEX tubing runs into the Tiki Bar and the Tiki Bar sink and so I've got a T that takes it to that Tiki Bar sink and then I've got a line that actually comes out and around. I've got it pulled out right now because I've still got to seal the patio I just painted and then I've got an elbow there and so from that elbow, I've got another one that comes out to a Y. One is going to go to my garden cart for hand watering. And then the other line there is going to actually run into a filter and a, an automatic timer. Let me show you those. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to filter particulates down. And so I've got this little bad boy right here. This is a cheap little filter that you can get for drip irrigation. You can get it off of Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that. It's got a, it's got a little screen in there. And then the next thing is this is like this is like 35 bucks at the uh, off of Amazon. It's a dig uh, timer. It's got seven days of the week on it, but you can actually set it up to where it can water up to four times a day, and it does it automatically. It'll turn on at a certain time of the day, water for whatever amount of time you want it to water, and then shut off. During the early spring, I might water once every two to three days. When we get into July and August, I may have this thing watering every morning, 5.30 in the morning for maybe 20, 30 minutes. And I'll do it every day because the pots, especially the hanging baskets, are really going to dry out. And I actually ran drip tubing around the uh, perimeter of the patio where I've got that stuff. And I'll show you, I've got some, uh, I've got some drip lines that are dangling and that's what it's for. It's for those pots because it'll automatically water those too. Very handy to have. Every year I pop the 9 volt out. And every spring I put a brand new one in and it'll last all season. Can't beat that with a stingy stick. And so you can see right here, this is where my filter will go on and then the timer. And then I'm actually going to hook in. This is uh, the black one inch drip tube line. Uh, you can buy this in rolls of 100 feet and it's pretty doggone cheap. And so you can, uh, you can supply your entire uh, yard with it and then you just punch in right there. You can hook up little quarter inch lines. This is the one that actually runs to the patio right here. And so all around the garden I have got uh, the one inch drip tube line and then uh, smaller tube lines coming out to feed pots and, and garden areas there. You can tee this off and so I've got one that runs all the way out and feeds everything along the side here. It goes out to that back. I got an elbow and then I elbow it again. Well I teed it off at the pool, I actually run it right along the, the back side here. And so out here in the pool area, I 90 it up right there and bring it through. And then it runs all through the beds here. I have it running out the bed there. And then it will run all the way down. I just run it right up against the wall here to feed this other bed here. Put a T in right there. And I bring it to this bit. Oh my gosh. That thing has gone from that to that in about two weeks. Got some hostas that are over here flying in the shade. <laughs> Squirrel! Let's get to hooking it up. Um, one of the things that I will do is I will clean off the old uh, pipe thread here, uh, tape. And I actually highly recommend using, uh, 
using plumber's tape. Now this is the professional grade stuff. It costs a little bit more, but I don't want leaks. I don't want to be at work and have this thing uh, have the leak fa or the uh, seal fail. And so I use the high dollar stuff. That way I don't have leaks in my lines and and uh, even in my uh, my sprayers, my hand sprayers and all that. I'll use this stuff on that. Uh, that way I'm assured of a really good connection. And like my daddy always taught me, when you use pipe thread, what you want to do is you want to imagine in your head when you're, when you're tightening it up, it's righty tighty. So you're going to be tightening the filter to the right and you want the pipe thread to go the exact same direction. When it comes to the flow of the filter, do pay attention to the arrow. The water's going that way. We want this to, you know, obviously. And another word of caution here. This is plastic. Do not cross thread this because it's plastic. It will tear up real easy. I don't want to mad dog this at this point. We're going to take it nice and gentle. Now I'm going to seal up these threads with the plumber's tape. Yeah, this has got me sure hoping Amazon doesn't change the size of these filters because I got the thing secured in there. Uh, but I think we're good to go here. You know, I noticed after COVID, I breathe a lot heavier in my videos. <laughs> I apologize for that. It cannot be helped. And the next thing I need to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm shut off over there. I'm going to turn this on. We'll check for leaks. And then I need to blow it out because if there's any dirt and contaminants in the uh, PEX tubing line, we'll get it blown out before we hook up the drip irrigation. And so I had this Y connection set to open because the biggest problem you run, run into in the wintertime is if the water doesn't have anywhere to go, that's what causes you to bust. So I'm going to shut both of these off and we'll check for leaks. And now for the bloody moment of truth here. Let's see if we have any lakes. I'm on. And let's open her up. I got a light there, so I'm going to fix that now. The other thing we're going to want to do once we do get her opened up is uh, make sure we get all the charcoal blown out because there's going to be some dark liquid. That's just the charcoal filtering. Uh, so it's time to tighten up a little here. I feel like I'm on a sub trying to stop a leak here. Submarine. I've got a little gasket right here. It's around the uh, around that deal. And it needs to uh, be down a little bit further. So I'm going to push that down. Okay, let's try again here. Fingers crossed. Here we go. <laughs> it worked. Yay. No leaks. Okay. Let's go blow it out on the other side now. Woo! There she goes. Looking good. Do pardon the tiki bar mess. It's springtime and the bar tends to be a staging area for the gardening, gardening events. There we go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pipe thread and hook up the timer to the filter. If you store in your garage like I do, be sure and check your seals. Looky there. I found that in there like that uh, from last season. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the, the uh, rubber gasket in here. And then uh, we'll get her hooked up. And so I've got it set to 1027 a.m. on Sunday. And we are set there. If it's raining, I can, uh, I can hit this off button. And then this comes up. It will not water again until I come back over here and hit it again. And if at any time I want to activate the water, I can just hit that and it'll turn it on. Get seated properly. No cross threading. Water in the hole. No, wait. Water in the line. And turn it on. Engaging. I just uh, realized my mechanism inside here. I guess it uh, froze in the garage and maybe there was a little bit of water in it and she's not working anymore. So I got to go to Lowe's. I'll see you in a half hour. It's we're in, we live out of town. <laughs> Let's be in the front row. Okay. We're just getting a digital timer. 
Well, it's Easter Sunday and they're closed today. And it's time now for Plan B. I'm only getting a drip irrigation timer. I'm only getting a drip irrigation timer. Oh, look at all that. <laughs> I get so tickled at their majesty palms. Look at those little things. I've had mine grow for three or four years. They look a little bit different. So you're probably going to find that Amazon is probably the cheapest way to get your drip irrigation stuff. However, if you're in a bind like I am right now, Home Depot actually has a very good selection of uh, timers and, and a lot of the stuff that you need. That's the ticket. Let's go down here. Oh, it's crowded. Okay, so I misspoke a while ago. It's half inch tubing. I don't know why I said one inch, but it's half inch tubing. About 32 bucks gets you 100 feet of that stuff. And then they got all the fittings that you need right there. And then drip emitters and connectors. Sometimes you want to you want to punch a hole in it and use a barb connector and then run your line out to your actual plant. And they've got drippers, adjustable sprayers, all kinds of goodies. And why would you looky there? The very thing I was looking for. That's not too bad. So you can go from that half inch line to the quarter inch smaller line. And that's handy for that, making that connection there. But also, sometimes you're going to want to elbow it like I did around the patio. So you can drop it down into the baskets, and those come in handy. So really, half-inch line and quarter-inch line, and then your connectors are going to be very handy to have. And on Amazon, they'll actually sell you, you know, like bulk kits of a bunch of that stuff. You can get some locally as well, though. What we're going to do when we get back is I've got these termination deals. I've got the caps off in the wintertime and wrapped. Uh, we'll blow the lines out, we'll recap it, and pressurize it and check for leaks. But yeah, they got all kinds of stuff. And then that quarter inch line I was telling you about, um, let's see here. Actually, this brown stuff is what I use a lot of. The, one roll of this goes a long way, but you can get a couple of rolls for, you know, 15 bucks or so. I just realized that is the wrong one. That is not what I want. That's there we go. That's what I need right there. This is a DIG model B09DB. Did I mention I live out of town? <laughs> Boy, the pollen is absolutely horrible today. I used to have a black car. Now it's kind of green. And we're back. All right, so I got the new one on. I got the timer set. And the clock set. Oh yeah, it's uh, 12:15 now. A little bit later. Um, let's get her on. So now, if all works well, we will be leak-free and be blowing these lines out. Turn it on. Off she goes. I got no leaks. Let's go check the uh, end of the line. So, like I said earlier, I've got three lines that terminate at dead ends for these caps. And get this thing off of here. Got nice clear water flowing through so I'm going to cap this one. And and the quarter inch lines are starting to get some pressure. Yes indeed. Can't tell you how handy it is uh, having drip all the way around. Makes it so much easier to have lots of plants. This was the final line here. I had to cap it up just to get some pressure. And I'm going to open it up now and let uh, any debris that's in there come out for a minute or so. And these basket misters, they work really good. You can get a little stake uh, to help hold it in the basket. Okay, next up I'm going to get the garden cart uh, hose hooked up. And now, without further ado, it's time for the moment of truth. Let's hope I don't get sprayed. Hey, we're good. Good to go. We're in business. All right, so we got water. That is outstanding. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification, leaving a thumbs up. Everybody tells you to do that on YouTube, but it feeds the algorithm. If you don't do that kind of stuff, they don't show your videos. You don't get any play, and uh, it really does help us. So we thank you for that. I'll have links down below in the description section for some of these items. 
guys thanks for watching next video we're going to be unloading the greenhouse and setting up all of our plants for hardening off for planting so we'll see you next time and thanks for watching and one more thing if you're still watching i appreciate that if you look right down below the video here you're going to find probably maybe right over here or maybe it's over here there's something called an applause button if you found this video helpful it saved you some time or money if you wouldn't mind throwing a little uh, applause my way basically it's uh, it's like super chat only for videos and you can click the applause button if you found it helpful and throw a couple of coins our way and that'll help pay for the new uh, drip irrigation uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.